Well, let's just begin right with it today. We did Mama's Boys on Wednesday night, and let's uh, talk today about the rise of Trumpers, good and bad. Rise of Trumpers, good and bad. Um, if you will, please stand. Read with me, please, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Father, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will raise up pastors across America to be bold, to show your people their transgression, Father, that we may receive forgiveness and mercy and power, Lord, in the face of enemies. And I do ask, God, that you will help us resist the devil and be bold. I ask, Father, that you raise up young people, elderly, people of all ages, Father, whether they're pastors or not, to stand in the gap, to cry out, Lord, at the abominations that are committed. Father, that we may seek you. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you help us. Amen. Now, it will be assumed the rise of Trumpers, good and bad, uh, you might assume that that refers to President Trump. And you know, there's a sense in which it does, strangely. I'll explain. I say strangely because President Trump is tied to a, a movement of trumpeting, which he's only a part, a political part. He's an example to some degree. And to better understand this, we have to take a closer look at the definition of the word Trump and its variation. Um, we're going to analyze the good and bad in regard to trumping, trumpery, and such like, because it's all around us now. Uh, we really need, you know, there's this idea that in the Bible, Everything was a lamb's horn or a ram's horn, and it was in the days of Joshua and things like that. But uh, they made trumpets out of silver, and uh, so it wasn't all that different than our modern trumpets, a little longer. Uh, so the Bible does say, cry aloud and spare not. It says to uh, lift up your voice like a trumpet. And you know whether you have uh, the situation with, um, oh, it's probably not on. I was going to give you a Reveille trumpet or a, um, the sound of a trumpet that um, calls you to battle. But let's take a look at some definitions. This is the definition from the Oxford English Dictionary of Trump to deceive, to cheat. What about Trumper? Oxford English Dictionary, a deceiver, an imposter, a cheat. What about Trumpery? Century Dictionary, 1895. Deceit, fraud, a showy thing of no intrinsic value, rubbish, trash, nonsense. Uh, Oxford English again, trumpery, something of less value than it seems, trash. Oh, let's keep going on. Oxford English Dictionary, trumpery, regarded as idle or superstitious. Finally, Webster's trumpery says falsehood, empty talk. What about trumped up? You ever heard of trumped up charges, trumped up accusations? Century Dictionary says fabricated out of nothing or deceitfully, forged, false, worth, worth, uh, worthless. Listen to me now. We certainly have the rise of all of this today in a major way, politically, religiously. You have false accusations, trumped up charges against believers. You, you have persecution with uh, these slanders everywhere. You have deceivers, and, and you have a lot of religious deceivers. It's not just in the political. Certainly, it's in the religious realm where you have a lot of show, what looks like a lot of power, a lot of trumpery, 
But I'm going to tell you, it's trumped up. It, it, it's falsehood. It's empty talk. It's deceit. And the Bible predicted this would happen. And so I'm showing you the bad right now of trumpery, okay? I'm showing you the bad of the rise of Trumpers. And uh, it's in the political realm. It is in the religious realm. And it is bad news. And the Bible predicted it would be here today. Let's take a look at just a few of these verses. 2 Timothy 2 says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, trumpery, falsehood, empty talk, profane, vain babblings. The Bible, you know, says in 2 Timothy 3, This know also that in the last days, that's the time we're in, perilous times shall come. Why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. Now listen to these words. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. I mean, they're going to have a lot of trumpery. They're going to have a lot of trumpery, a lot of show, a lot of talk, a lot of talk. But I'm going to tell you what. The Bible says they'll be disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, having a form of godliness. That's that show. That's the deceitful show. Remember the Pharisees would... Uh, Anytime they would do anything, they'd blow the trumpet, you know, let everybody see. There's a lot of show. Uh, uh, the sorcerer, Simon the sorcerer, uh, he gave out that he's some great one. There's a lot of boasting, a lot of pride, a, a lot of show in religious fundamentalism, in uh, politics, even conservative politics. There's a lot of show. But the Bible says it's a form of godliness, but n denying the power thereof from such turn away. Something's missing. The true power. It's all an empty form of deception. And I'm going to tell you, in the last days, it will continue worse and worse. It says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The rise of the Trumpers. We're talking about the bad Trumpers right now. The bad Trumpers. Uh, the Lord Jesus said, Matthew 24, there shall arise false Christs false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. Talk about blowing the trumpet. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Oh, my deceit, fraud, a showy thing of no intrinsic value, a deceiver, imposters, the trumpers. It says in 2 Peter 2, but they were, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. There's no power there. There's no power. Oh, you can look at the wine. Oh, yeah, you can go near the strange woman's house. Don't be a, don't, don't be a fundamentalist. Don't be a, a legalist, they say, by slander. I'm going to tell you something. They're going to get you in sin. They're going to get you in bondage to sin. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to their wickedness. The Bible says that you ought not make provision for the flesh. The Bible says you ought to come not nigh strange woman's house. The Bible says that you ought to flee fornication. The Bible, don't you listen to these wicked people. Don't you listen to these people out here lying to you, telling you can watch all kinds of garbage and snuggle up to sin and touch the unclean thing and it'll be all right. God will be with you. I tell you what, you're not going to have the fellowship with God. He's not going to answer your prayers like he would, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're going to be like Cain. When sin lies at the door, you're going to fall into sin. I tell you, I'm talking a big sin. You better watch out. The Bible says, finally, this is all going to culminate in one man that's going to come, Satan's son, the son of perdition, that's going to rule the world, and he's going to destroy many by peace. Talk about trumping. Talk about trumpery. He is going to have a show. He is going to have a show for the world. And the Bible says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Antichrist, the beast of Revelation 13 with his false prophet, he's coming. But before he comes, right now, you have many false prophets preparing the way for him. See, you have a movement preparing the way for this. Be careful what you get caught up in. Be careful. There are some fakes among politicians right now, even among the far right, that pretend they're, they're actually funded. They are there to lead you into 
falsehood, but they are disguised as on our side, on the side of truth. Wicked imposters, sodomites even. There are some among fundamental Christians. You know, the charismatics have been filled with sodomites for years. You know what I mean? Up there, people like them because they're nice and sweet, and they say, he's not going to preach very hard to me. We like this nice little pastor, but I'm going to tell you something. He ends up being a sodomite. You know what I mean? But, but I'll tell you, there's some in fundamental Christianity right now. There's some that are funded, I believe. There's some fakes that are not on our side, but they pretend to be. There's some Trumpers out there. There's some Trumpers. And I'm going to tell you, even if they're not funded, even if they're not funded by wicked men in high places, they're nevertheless led by Satan. They're trumped up. They're full of trumpery, false show, zeal, without true knowledge, full of nefarious motives. The Bible warns you, even in the days of Paul, that this was there. It says, Romans 16, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches this deceive the hearts of the simple. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Who's funding you? Who's behind you? Who's pulling your strings? Trying to make fundamentalism look like garbage. Trying to make it look bad. I tell you what, trying to make the political right look insane. Who's pulling your strings? The Bible says in Jude 1, Their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds good. The Bible says in Jeremiah 8, Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. God's trying to call his people. You just keep getting worse every generation. Every generation, you're just sliding back. Next year, you'll be worse than this year. What's going on here? Why aren't you listening? Because God raises up men to call you back. He raises up men and women to call you back to sound the alarm. And God says, why are you refusing to hear? Why won't you change? Do you know how close you are to devastation in America? Do you know? It's almost as if God says, time's been up a while. It's been up. You know how close you are? I don't just mean moral fabric falling apart. I mean God bringing the final consequences upon this nation. I tell you, we ought to be sober. We ought to be rejoicing in the Lord and His truth, but we ought to be on our faces asking God for mercy for your children, for your grandchildren. I tell you, what should the righteous do at this time with all this trumpery, with all of this deceit, with all of this deception and trash? What should we do in the midst of such trumpery trumped up charges against the godly. You can barely move without somebody lying about you. Lying about you in court, slandering you, slandering your name, slandering your church, slandering your people. What are you to do in such a day and age of adulterers and sodomites and their lies? What are you to do in such a day, church of God? First thing you got to do is you got to beware. You got to know Jesus told you beforehand, you'd be here. You got to be diligent. You got to be careful. You got to be wise as serpents. You got to watch. But there's more. There's more. You've got to start trumping. Not in the way they're trumping. You've got to trump in the other way. Woo, I tell you, we're going to talk about the rise of trumpery. We're going to talk about the rise of the trumpers now, and we're going to talk about the good trumpers. We're going to talk about the good trumpers. Let's notice the definition of trump. Oh, but here we got another definition. Oxford, English Dictionary, one who celebrates or summons loudly like a trumpet. You know what you got to do? You got to stare in the face of these false accusers and these deceitful people. You've got to stand in the face of a sinful nation. You've got to stand in the face of a sodomite crowd, and you've got to lift your voice up like a trumpet. You can't be silent. You can't be quiet. You've got a job to do. God puts you here for a reason. You can't be silent at a time like this. You've got to stand up in the gate. You've got to lift up your voice like a trumpet and cry aloud to trump means one who summons loudly like a trumpet. You've got to call God's people together. You've got to say, you've got to gather together. You've got to quit sitting on your behind. You've got to get in a godly church. I don't care if you've got to move. What, what are you doing sitting around? You've got to move somewhere. Join together with God's people, and let's start trumping.
I t 30 years ago, I was on the streets of Dallas, and we were there every single week, and we never missed a weekend. We tried to hit every gay pride parade, every club, every, every, everything we could do, also in Fort Worth. And I'm not saying that's all we got to do. Your individual life, not just publicly with the church. We've stood in front of abortion clinics. We, we, we've been around. But I'm going to tell you, there's more that we can do. There's more than we can do. And individually, you've got to go out and start doing some trumping. Amen? You've got to go out and start lifting up your voice in the face of evil and quit being silent in the face of I tell you, people get on Facebook and they see evil. You know, if you're going to be on stinking Facebook, at least do something. At least stand up. I, I know they'll... they'll Unfriend you really quick, but but you know I wish you'd just get off the crap is what I wish you would do. It, it, can you say that in? Well, you can say that in South Carolina, but I'm gonna tell you, you, you need to get off the dung is what you need to do. Amen. You need to. I'm from South Carolina. Uh, you need to get off the dung. Facebook is a mess, but if you're gonna be in the gate, you need to stand up and you need to preach. You need to stand up in the face of evil. Now listen. One who celebrates or summons loudly like a trumpet. Uh, Oxford Dictionary says a trumper is a trumpeteer. Somebody that blows a trumpet. Amen. Let's be a trumper. Let's blow the trumpet. Amen. Uh, what is it? What is it? A trumpeteer. I want to show you how Jeremiah was called to deal with the bad trumpery all around him. He had some bad trumpery. He had shows, hypocrites, slanderers, deceitful prophets and people all around him. And he said this, Jeremiah 6, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people. See, God's people, they need to be fixed. Sometimes they have sin, and that sin is like a sore. And when you bring God's truth, you can heal that through, rep through repentance. But they've healed it slightly. They, they stuck a little Band-Aid on it, you know, when it's really infected. Saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Oh, the false prophets, the false preachers. Oh, they say these false teachers, when they want to endure sound doctrine, but itching ears, they'll raise to themselves up. They'll heap to themselves teachers because they got itching ears. And those teachers will not endure sound doctrine. The people won't endure sound doctrine, and they'll tell them what they want to hear. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? I'll tell you, one of the biggest things you could do right now is go through the Bible and write down every abomination and make sure you're not committing it. Nay! They were not at all ashamed. You can get to a point where just a few generations ago, just a few years ago, you'd be ashamed to do what you're doing right now, but not anymore. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I'm going to tell you, soon there's going to be a deliverance out of here to save God's people from the strife of tongues. You want to be ready. You better watch and pray always that you be ready for the Lord's coming at any minute. And then there's the judgment seat of Christ that's coming. Every one of us that's saved is going to stand before that to receive the deeds done in your body, whether good or bad, knowing the terror of the Lord. God loves you. You are secure in Him for all eternity by grace through faith alone, but there is a judgment for how you have walked in the Christian life. There is a judgment even in this life as well as at the judgment seat of Christ. And there's going to be some folks that are going to fall. They're going to fall. They're going to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to fall. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So what does Jeremiah do in the face of this crowd that's not even ashamed of abomination, that's not even ashamed of their sin? And when they're preached to, they just puff themselves up. They don't even blush. There's no shame whatsoever. There is Sodom. What does Jeremiah do with a crowd like that? He begins to trump. He begins to trump, folks. You better believe he does. What does he say? He says, therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. Jeremiah says, I'm going to explode. I'm going to explode is what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to explode. We've been in the streets of Fort Worth. We've exploded at the side of Mike Pride. I've been to jail for it. We have done everything we can. Well, no, we haven't done everything we can, but we've done as a church corporately, and I know individually you've tried to cry against sin, but I tell you what, we need to get full of some fury of the Lord. We need to get fury of some righteous indignation, and uh, we need to... Uh, maybe you're weary. Maybe your problem in life, you're not experiencing your fellowship with God like you should have. I, I tell you what, maybe you're weary because you've been quiet as a little mouse. You've been like a little church mouse, and uh, you haven't said a word about anything. Uh, you you're letting relatives go to hell. You're letting neighbors. You're letting your cities. Uh, who knows what in the world? You're holding things in, and I'm going to tell you, you're not right with God if you're holding His truth in, if you're holding this indignation in. I don't want you to be hateful. I don't want you to be... Um, railing on people. I want you to speak the truth in love, but you need to stand up and quit being a quiet Christian. That is the problem. And you know, we're starting to see some things change in America. You know why it's changed? Because we predicted that there's going to rise a generation that's not going to be quiet anymore. We predicted a homeschool generation that's going to have some firebrands among us. We predicted that there's going to be a change in the political and the religious crowd where some people are going to say, okay, this is far enough. We're going to stand up and you be sissies if you want to. You be quiet if you want to, but we're going to start having some backbone and we're going to start standing up. And I'm going to tell you, the second you begin to do that, people start coming out and they're not afraid anymore. And I tell you, evil lost its power. When God's people stand up in boldness, evil loses its power and they begin to retreat they might slander you even more they might go crazy one time I was uh, down driving back home on a Saturday and it says it's gay day at Six Flags I said I didn't even know it was gay day and, and I didn't have time to gather anybody so I drove over to Six Flags got out of my car look they were all lined up on the front and I just said just one person I'll get out here and hold sign I had a sign in my car I begin to preach and the more I preach the more I preach the more gross they got, the sicker they got. And I said, I don't care. I'll sit here by myself. And I just began to preach. And I preached and I preached. And after one hour, they began to do unspeakable things. They began to just like the devil started coming out. And I just kept preaching and I kept preaching. And finally, every single one of them loaded up and disappeared. They cannot stand the light. They cannot stand the light. I got in my car, drove back home, and I said, praise God. You know, if you just stand up a little bit, it's amazing what you can do. It's amazing what you can do. They're not, you know, they might still be in Six Flags, but they're not out parading it while everybody comes in. They left. They left. You can do amazing things with God if you will stand up in the face of evil and quit being so silent. Quit being so silent. Open up your mouth. That's what Jeremiah did. He says, I'm about to blow, and that's good. Too long Christians have been nicey, nicey, soft and mushy and fluffy and mousy and scaredy cats, always silent, always afraid to speak up and speak out. And I tell you, when I first went out there and started speaking up, you always got some little mousy Christian coming up to you, some effeminate. He talks like he's a sodomite. It's like, why do you even talk like that, man? And he comes over to you, and he's like, you, you need to... You, you need to be nice. You, you need to be like a Christian. I mean, get off of me, man. It, it, it's like when my property was on fire. Our church property was on fire there in Texas, and uh, it was burning. The, everything was burning, and I was out there with a hose, and some fella drives by. No, no, and he's grabbing the hose from me, and I got no a, a tug of war with this fella. He's like, no, 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 you're going to get hurt. No, no, that's not the way. I'm like, give me my hose. It's like that when you try to stand up for righteousness, man. You're going to have to wrestle with somebody. Get back and sit out. If you're not man enough to do it, go sit out. But get out of my way. Go home. You're on your way to the bar with these people. Go home. You're the problem. The love police, they're not going to say a word to the drunkards, to the adulterers, to the fornicators. They're not going to say a word to any of these people, but oh, they're going to rebuke the Christian that dares to stand up. The agape police. Whew. Hear ye the word of the Lord, you silent, do nothing, soggy milk toast, reeds blowing in the wind. Jesus predicted you'd be here. I tell you, if it goes this way, you go that way. If it goes that way, 
I tell you, cannibalism is in the news now and all the movies and they're starting, you know, that's the last thing. That's the final Canaanite thing that you could have. They eat us up the land. I'll tell you what, I, I tell you, you'll have Christians before you know it defending pedophilia and cannibalism. That's the final place. Where else can you go? Even the movies are starting to say, well, we're done with adultery and sodomy. It's, that's all over. The only place we can go is incest and bestiality and cannibalism. That's the, where else can you go? How long are you going to hang with this crowd and be silent? You should have got off the boat a long time ago. God forbid, you should have separated from that crowd a long time ago. You should have stood up against it a long time ago when they're full of sorcery and disobedience and rebellion. Where are the Elijahs? Where are they at? Where are the Pauls? Where are the Jeremiahs? Where are the Isaiahs? Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. God called me to write a book telling Christians you're going to have the judgment seat of Christ and you're in a lot of trouble and you think that nothing you do you're going to receive for. You're wrong about that. You're wrong. And I tell you, they, folks don't like to hear that. Spoiled brats don't like to hear that they could have trouble and judgment and accountability. They don't like it. So God says this. God says, I set watchmen over you. He's going to raise up pastors saying, hearken to the sound of the what? To the trumpet. Yeah, that, that means the pastor's blowing the alarm from the pulpit. He's blowing the alarm. And he's saying, hearken, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. We will not hearken. In fact, we're going to lie about you and get you in trouble and put you in jail. We're not going to hearken to you. Jeremiah says, you know what? I kept preaching, but then my own family and my own relatives, my own friends began to turn. And, and he said, it got hard. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to do this no more. I'm just going to be quiet. I'm just going to be quiet. We're all tempted to be quiet, aren't we? We're all tempted in the face of lies. We're all tempted in the face of persecution to get discouraged, but you can't do it. You can't do it. Long before Trump ran for president, I preached in 2008 that a new breed, a new generation would arise, and you need to be a part of it, the Josiah generation. I preached the day my boy was born, Josiah the Holy Rebel, why I named my son Josiah, 6808, and I still pray that my boy will live up to his name. Uh, Josiah came along as a young man, a king, and they found part of the Bible they hadn't read before. And uh, he had that thing read, and he ripped his shirt, got down on his face, and he got up and says, we're in a lot of trouble in this nation. And he stood up, and he faced that sodomite crowd. He faced those Baalites, and he went through and destroyed all these idols and groves. And, and I tell you, hold of the prophet, Praise God for godly women involved in this Josiah revolution. You wouldn't believe the godly, conservative, sweet-looking girls and that it can stand up. And I tell you, the soft tongue breaketh the bone. They stay feminine. They're just as feminine as could be, but they are bold as lions. And they answer the wicked in the gate. It is an amazing thing to see, and I praise God for it. Uh, we have a new activism that's in conservative political climate, uh, w w and we have it in our churches, there is a new boldness. And I said, this generation is coming, and uh, God could have some mercy. Pray for it. Pray for it. You better be part of it. You better stand up and start standing in the face of evil and start getting in the way, or we're done for. God even told Josiah, you know what? I'm just going to hold off just a little bit because y'all are standing up. And then afterwards, I'm destroying everything. And so if you hope for just a little reprieve in America, you better stand up and get part of this crowd that's, that's, that's going to get in the way of evil. You better quit being a sissy. You better quit being a coward. You better quit being lazy and selfish and doing your own thing. You better stand up and start talking about Jesus and His Word and His truth and not be ashamed, not be ashamed. I tell you, I started watching homeschool Christian activists. I started seeing 
uh, girls all over the world showing up and running blogs and saying why I'm not a feminist and why I stand for truth. I started seeing uh, an explosion everywhere and I said praise God what an amazing thing this is so encouraging to see they have backbone they can debate uh, they're strong and then then all of a sudden you know I, I walked by and I clicked on on the internet and I heard Trump as uh, running for president and I heard him speak and I heard what he said to CNN. I heard him look at them cameras of CNN and says, you're all fake news. And, and, and he began to say, just go home. Go home, you're a bunch of fake news. You're just garbage. And uh, man, I couldn't believe it. I said, nobody's ever spoke to the media like that that I've heard. Praise God. This is a new thing. This is a new thing. No longer cowering to the the swamp or the agenda or, or the liberal media and what a blessing that was he's not perfect he he i don't even know to what degree he understands the bible or the gospel he's not perfect but there was backbone and god uses people with backbone unsaved and saved and what an amazing amount of things he accomplished the more backbone and, and the less deception, he could accomplish a lot more. But he accomplished a lot. He accomplished a lot. And if you just do that, one of the things he accomplished, he inspired a lot of others that just said, you know what? We don't got to be quiet. We don't got to be ashamed. We can stand up and just tell the truth without watering it down politically. And amazing things happen. People respond. It's the same even more so in the pulpits, and in the religious world. Quit being quiet. They use wit, they use humor in the confident way of Elijah and the way our Lord did. They expose the folly, they call people to repentance. Yeah, there's some imposters there. There's some funded imposters. They go overboard. Some become railers. We dealt with policemen for 20 years, taught people that they lie, taught people that there's good ones. But now there's this new police activism, you know, auditors. Some go overboard. Some are very disrespectful. But many, 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 many are saying, no, no, we're, 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 we're going to expose what's going on here. We're going to stand up for our liberty. We're going to stand up for the Constitution. And uh, it's a blessing to see this movement all across the board that, no, you're not going to use the game, you're not going to use these experts. No, no, we're not going to be quiet in the face of corruption. You've heard by me the rise of the snowflake generation, the safe place generation, the teddy bear crybabies, but praise God there is a Josiah generation that are bold, fearless, tough, throwing down the idols, bringing revival in the fear of God. It's good to see. It's good to see, church. No longer nice to a fault. Brave to defend, speak up, not waver, not like Osteen when they put him on headline news and what do you think of homosexuality and it, it, just listen to him talk listen to what he did representing Christianity listen to his slimy watered down compromised way of speaking most people know that but there's a lot of compromise what is a trumpet what's the purpose of a trumpet it's to alarm you, to awaken you. Why do you allow deceivers to voice their lies? Why do you hide and shake your head when brothers and sisters are being lied about and slandered? You ought to go after them. I mean, in earlier fundamentalism, I'm not saying you ought to do this. But you slandered the pastor or slandered somebody in that church. They're waiting for you in the parking lot to beat you up. That, that's, that's how it was. There were sisters, sweetest sisters you ever said. And they come over and say, I tell you what, you lie about some one of my sisters. You lie about my pastor. I tell you what, you're going to deal with me. 
Uh, I, I mean, this is, I, I'm not telling you to go grab people by the hair and beat them up, but I am telling you this. You ought to at least have some backbone to have some loyalty and stand up for your brother and sister. You ought to be right there with them. Paul said in my first answer, nobody stood with me. Nobody stood with me. Only Luke is with me. Demas forsook me, having loved this present world. God says a lot of them, uh, Paul says a lot of them, they're just scaredy cats, and he prayed for them. He prayed for them that they might find mercy because you're going to need mercy. You be quiet in the face of evil. You're going to need some mercy at the judgment seat of Christ. You better pray the person who's being slandered prays for you because you're going to be, you, you know, where were you during this time? Where were you when Jezebel's coming after Elijah? Where were you at? What's a trumpet? 1 Thessalonians 4 says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You know what a trump does? It calls you to battle. A trump calls you to battle. A trumpet. It's a loud call. The cavalry's coming. They blow the trumpet. It calls you to the meeting to the solemn assembly, blow the trumpet. Isaiah, cry aloud like a trumpet. I tell you, there are pastors, there are a bishop. A, bitch, a, a bishop means a watchman. They watch for your souls. But every one of you ought to be watchmen in one sense. You ought to do your part to stand for the truth. I want you to listen to something very important. Ezekiel 33 second largest church in America was Curtis Hudson's, I believe, down in Georgia in the early days of fundamentalism a few decades ago, quite a few. But I heard a preaching from Curtis Hudson one time. He said, you know what? I don't know what this means. We're missing something, but I'm scared of what's here. I'm scared of what's here. It means something very serious that I don't think we've really even looked at. And you're right. Curtis Hudson's dead now, but you're exactly right. You missed something here. You missed something that the, that the earlier fundamentalists saw. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, you don't just receive brownies or miss brownies at the judgment seat of Christ, buddy. You better look in the Bible and read Luke 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You better start looking inside the Bible and realize what our Lord Jesus Christ said is coming for lazy, quiet, scaredy cat, fearful believers who are not afraid of God, but they're afraid of this world. It says in Ezekiel 33, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Meaning, you're not in trouble. You gave the alarm. If you did what you can to warn your brother or sister, to warn your community, if you did what you can, then the blood's not on you. You did what you could. You did what you could. They, they stayed in sin. They didn't want to get out of it. You did what you could. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. It's his fault. But his blood, this is a secondary sense, will I require at the watchman's hand. How can somebody have the second largest Baptist church in America and read that and begin to tremble and say, I don't know what that means. But we're in trouble somehow or another. We better make sure we open our mouths. We better make sure we open our mouths. Amen. Let me show you something. Oh, don't miss this. Oh, don't miss this. Numbers 10 says, if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, are there not spiritual wars? Are there not spiritual battles? Are there not attacks by Satan, physical and spiritual? Then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. This is scary, because God says when you're under attack, why doesn't this apply spiritual as well as literal? If you're under attack, God says, I tell you what, I'll look down and notice what you're going through and I'll save you, but you've got to blow the trumpet. You've got to blow the trumpet. You've got to call the people. 
You got a bowl of Trump. I'm telling you something, folks. Where's the alarm right now? It's almost as if God's saying, if you're not going to be bold in the day of evil, if you're not going to cry aloud against it, then I'll just sit back and let it overtake you. But if you'll stand up and cry aloud against it in the day of battle, I'll deliver you. New Testament interpretation appears to me to be saying plainly, if you're going to be ashamed, if you're going to be a scaredy cat, if you're just going to sit back and be quiet as everything falls apart and everybody goes to hell, if you're going to be quiet about it, God says that I'll be quiet. Your victory is dependent upon blowing the trumpet, folks. You better sound the alarm. You better try to wake up your sleepy brother and sister. You better hold them accountable in love and humility. In love and humility. In fact, the more humility you have, the more you love Jesus for the sin that he saved you out of. And you have deep love and compassion for your brother and sister. You're not looking at them in haughtiness. You're looking at them saying, you know what, sin is horrible, and I'm so glad Jesus saved me from the degree that I had, and I pray he saves me more from it. But I'm going to tell you something, what you're doing is wrong, and you need to get out of this because it will destroy you. It will destroy your mind. It will destroy your soul. Get out of it. How can you be quiet in the face of somebody dying in sin and about to go over a cliff? How can you be quiet and watch them and call yourself righteous, call yourself loving? That's not loving. That's selfish. The trumpet has to sound. This is what happened in the past. Whenever there was a spiritual battle and God's people began to sound the alarm, God showed up. They prayed for boldness in the book of Acts. God showed up, shook the place, and gave them boldness. And they went out preaching. I tell you what, you want God to show up, you've got to have boldness. God looked for a man. He says he's always looking for a man to stand up. Midianites had destroyed everything. He looked for a man. There was one man hiding in the woods, and he said, I'm going to keep working, and I'm going to try to feed my family. I don't care about these Midianites. I'll hide it from them. And I tell you what, God showed up, and the angel of the Lord tapped him on the back. He turned around and looked at the angel of the Lord, and he said, Thou mighty man of valor. Me? God said, Yep, you're the man I'm going to use. I just need somebody to stand up. See, God shows up when you stand up. God shows up when you stand up. If you want to be quiet and silent, then wave bye to everything. Wave bye to everything you know. Wave bye to your children. Wave bye to their generation. Wave bye to it all. People stood up in the past. Revivals broke out. Revivals broke out. I tell you what. That's not my style. I'm a shy, quiet person, but all my life I've tried to stand up. I tell you what, I need to do it more. I need to do it more. I need to do it more. President Trump accomplished much. I, 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 like, I just heard of Larry Bird in basketball. I, 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 I clicked on something, and uh, he went around, and um, he knew how to talk, talk things back to people. You know, a famous basketball player, and... And he knew how to say, I'm going to take this basketball and I'm going to knock it on your head. And I'm going to, I mean, he knew how to do that. And, and I tell you what, it worked. He knew how to stand up and, and talk back to him. And, and I don't mean you ought to be sinful, but what, why don't you talk back to the devil? Why don't you talk back to this wicked crowd? Why are you letting them sit here and, and, and intimidate you? You have no reason to be intimidated. You have the truth. You don't have to be horrible and railing and and that type of thing, but God forbid. Why don't you stand up and talk back to this crowd? I don't understand it. The Lord raises up somebody in politics, and they begin to do something. I, I was done with politics, and all of a sudden they begin to do one thing that I'd never heard. They began to talk back. They began to talk back to the wicked. They began to talk back to the liberal media, which needed to be put in their place. And isn't it something? His name was Trump. It was Trump. Take courage. Take inspiration that whatever you feel about him, whatever you feel about his path, 
whatever he's lacking, whatever he still needs to know, that he had a little bit of backbone that Christians need. Why are Christians talking back to the liberal media? Why are you a scaredy cat? A new attitude, a new boldness that was buried before. And all of a sudden, we start seeing successes. We start seeing change. We start seeing God move. And when you stand up, others stand up. Paul was persecuted. Others began to stand up. If you get out here and do what's right, you'll inspire many around you. Just right here in this church, you start standing up, it spreads around. It spreads around. You start lighting a fire among the, the, the other children. It's amazing. Thank you for that. Let me talk just a few minutes. Why are people quiet in the face of evil? I think you know. First one, shame. You're ashamed. You are ashamed to be what God... You're, you're ashamed of God's commandments. You're ashamed of God's standard. There's women ashamed to be female. There's men ashamed to be men. You're ashamed to associate with anything that seems to be traditional or godly. Oh, that's sad because my God says, for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words... Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Boy, when you see that crowd, when you see that crowd coming out of the sky, you're going to want to be with that crowd. And the Lord says, I'm ashamed of you. I am so ashamed of you. And you're going to see all of this crowd, this adulterous generation. You're going to see this whole crowd running and, and, and see what they're going to be like when the Lord comes out of the sky. I'm going to tell you something. You want to be with this crowd. God says, how can you be ashamed? How can you be ashamed of God's commandments and His truth? I tell you what, a, a Jewish girl that's not even saved that I know of, um, nevertheless, uh, it, it, one of the headlines today is a Taiwanese uh, a ping pong player, a female, went in the media and says this Jewish girl who's a prodigy at ping pong, uh, she's wearing skirts, she wears modest blouses, and she beats everybody at ping pong. And uh, this Taiwanese girl came out and says, it's disgusting. And she began to cuss and says, it's just, just, and just called her all these horrible names. And see, this is what you're up against, people. This is what you're up against. You try to do right. You try to do right, and people are going to blaspheme and slander and hate you. I tell you, the Bible says the righteous... They're an abomination to the wicked. But the wicked are an abomination to you. But you've got to do right. You've got to love them. But one thing you shouldn't do is be ashamed of your standards that God calls you to because you're afraid of somebody pointing the finger at you. I tell you point the finger right back at them. People say, you believe this? Brother, Father, I, I can't believe that you believe that. You point that finger right back. You ought to be ashamed for not believing it. You better believe I believe it. You believe that Christians can be... Yes, I do, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're not going to make me ashamed for believing what Lord Jesus said. You're not going to make me ashamed of His commandments. You stand up. Don't you be ashamed of the Lord Jesus' command. Before you know it, you'll have a revival, and everybody will be believing like that. And if not, who cares? If you've got to stand alone, stand alone. Stand alone like Noah and his family. Stand alone like Antipas against the world, the faithful martyr. Stand alone if you may. Paul did. You stand alone. It's the truth, and I'm going to stand on it, and I don't care what anybody thinks. There's the fear of man, though, but they might persecute me. They might hurt me. What I tell you in darkness, Jesus says, that speak you in the light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. That's like a trumpet, brother. And fear not. Oh, that's the reason, isn't it? That's the reason you don't do it. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I tell you, you ought to get the fear of God and let that overcome your fear of man. Praise God. You need boldness. You don't need to be some trembling trumpet. You need to get out of here. I tell you, how can you go to battle? 
How can anybody prepare themselves for battle if you don't blow the trumpet? You get out here and say, okay, I'll just barely blow it, you know, and I'm just going to play a little disco song, you know, Casey and the Sunshine Band or whatever it is today. You're going to sit there. That's not what they want to hear, brother. That's an uncertain sound. The Bible says, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? Um, yeah, I think this is the right standard, but um, I'm embarrassed about it, and no wonder nobody wants to be godly. No, pastors ought to get up and say, you better believe this is right. I know it's right. You ought to be ashamed of yourself to not believe it. They say, but nobody's doing it out here, or at least not a lot of people, more people than you know. There's more people than you know. I walked, I don't know where I was. I was in some Walmart somewhere. Uh, where in the world was I? Maybe Brent, I, I don't know. Uh, I think it was another state. But, um, I saw four workers in skirts, four workers, long hair, skirts. Just, just, I walked over and congratulated them, said, hello, I'm glad that you're a feminine. And they just smiled and said, amen, glory to God. And the others started saying, amen, glory to God. Everybody started rejoicing. And I, I tell you, God's crowd is out there. Whatever the standards are, God's crowd is out there. But uh, you need to, and if they're not, who cares? You do what God said. You do what God said. You know, the new versions get rid of certainty. They don't want you to be certain. Occultism gets rid of your certainty. They say, well, you can't know. You can't know. Quit playing that game. Oh, I love Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They answered to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. He said, you got to bow down. You got to bow down. Are you going to the fiery furnace? You know what they're saying? They're saying, we're very respectful to you, king. We're, we're, we're not going to rail on you. We're not going to cuss you. We're very respectful. But we are not trembling in regard to this issue right here. Do you see me? I'm not careful in regard to answering you right now. No, we will not bow down. Our God will deliver us. And if not, let it be known unto you. We will not bow down to your image. Isn't it great when you can say, I am not careful. I am not trembling. You're going to get a bold, straight answer right now. That's what you got to say to this crowd. That's what you got to say to the government. That's what you got to say to everybody around you. Say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, and I'm not careful, and I'm not timid, and this trumpet's not going to just be like a little, a little birthday party whistle. No, no, this thing, I'm going to blow the trumpet. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Paul told one pastor, a young man, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This is what the poor man was trying to pastor. He's trying to pastor a bunch of slow bellies, liars. Paul says this witness is true. Can you believe that? Paul stereotyped. And he said, you know that stereotype you always hear about the folks you're pastoring? That's true, says Paul. But Paul didn't want to do something evil about it. He says, you've got to know that. So, so now here's what you've got to do. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. He said, this is their tendency. Americans have their own tendencies, don't they? <laughs> of, all, uh, of all types. Rebuke them sharply. And then he says, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. He didn't want some t timid Titus. You can't be a pastor and be timid. Timid. You can't accomplish anything in your neighborhood, your community, and be timid. You have to stand up and quit being a mouse. And uh, you got to speak with the authority of God. Don't be wrong. Don't get out of here and run your big mouth and don't know what you're talking about. Don't have zeal without knowledge. God forbid, study to show yourself approved. Make sure you're right. And then if you're right, get out here and sound a trumpet and quit being a wimp. We got enough wimpy pastors everywhere. We got enough of the effeminate out here. We need some people in the pews to stand up, and if nobody does it, say, I'll do it. We need some children. We need some young ladies to stand up and say, nobody will do it. I'll get in the gate. You shouldn't be in the pulpit, but the Bible never said you shouldn't be out here in the gate. The Bible said, I, I don't care what pastor says. I'll look you right in the eye and rebuke you right to your face. Women ought to get out here in the streets, and they ought to sound the alarm. They could do it in a feminine way. But, but I tell you what, we need some young ladies, some young sisters in the gates. There was a time when they would go through the neighborhoods and you had the sisters that, that they would carry uh, baseball bats into bars. And they said, no, no, no more drunkenness in our neighborhood. And you might not like that, but hey, we need some sisters. I can't believe the pornography, the evil that's all around here. And sisters just walking around, not caring. No, you ought to sound the alarm. And uh, 
I tell you, praise God for it. Praise God for it. If nobody's going to do it, you stand up. A lot of times you got to do it. You just look around and say, nobody's going to do it. I'll stand up. I tell you, if nobody's going to rebuke this psycho babble, if nobody's going to rebuke this false doctrine, I'll do it. Not even called to be a pastor. I'll stand up and do it. You just might find God will use you in amazing ways. Hey, listen to me, church. You ought to speak the truth in love, but you can lack love in both ways. Speak loudly, but with humility. But how is it love to be silent? Leviticus 19 says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, not suffer sin upon him. You don't got to be puffed up in pride. You don't know how far down the hole he was. He might be doing pretty good. God might be working on him and bringing him out of sin. Don't you puff yourself up. But you can go to your brother and say, you know what, you're on the wrong path. The Bible said in Proverbs 28, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. That's because they're wicked. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Maybe you get some righteousness and you won't start shaking so much. Amen? I tell you, if you say, I'm going to serve God, I'm going to get right, you know, I can't believe what God has done for me. I can't believe the mercy God has shown me. I had a car wreck. I about killed my friend. Praise God. God allowed him to be alive. I had 40 stitches all up in my head, and I praise God. I got up from there. I started running from God again, and God came and chased me down, cursed me again. I finally said, okay, Lord, you're God, and thank you. Thank you for saving me. God, I've done enough for a lifetime. I never, ever want to see sin again. I hate sin, and I'm not perfect, but I tell you what, I had a zeal. I got up from there, and God saved me, and I had a zeal, and I pray you get that zeal. I pray you'll be sick of sin. I pray you look in the mirror and see what you've already done. You've done enough sin for a lifetime already. And remember, the more knowledge you have, the more you're in trouble for the sin that you've committed. This is a homeschool generation. God forbid some of the sins you've committed with the light that you have. Now stand up and be righteous for God. Be like that woman who loved much. And you get out here and be zealous and you help your brothers and sisters get rid of that stinking sin because sin will destroy us. First Thessalonians, Paul said, we were bold in our God to speak into you the gospel of God with much contention. Oh, we were bold. You ought to be bold as a lion. I didn't say ugly and crude. Let me give you a few more definitions of trump. Century Dictionary says, to tr a trump is a person upon whom one can depend. Oh, I pray that's you. A trump is one who spontaneously does the right thing in any emergency. We're in an emergency day and age. Can God count on you? Can God count on you to be a trump? Can God count on you to, to raise your voice? Can God depend upon you right now? He gave you light, and he says, you got a wicked generation that's fallen over a cliff. Now you stand up and do something. Your family's falling. Your cousins are falling. Your uncles, God gave you the light. Can you stand up and do something with it? Or are you going to hide it like a chicken? Are you going to hide it like a little mouse? Are you going to hide God's truth? Or are you going to stand up and do something with it? Be an Esther. Be an Esther. How do you know you're not here for this very reason? How do you know God didn't give you this light for this very reason? God will use somebody else, says the word of God, and judgment will fall on you. But you better stand up and say, you know what, maybe I'm here for a reason, and I'm going to stand up and do something. I tell you, 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 you can sit here and do that. You can look out there and say, if none of you are going to do it, I'll do it. I'll do it. Can God depend on you to sound the alarm, or will you see fire and destruction and evil and look the other way? Sometimes it takes a lot. I have a great friend, a pastor, and, and I just heard from his mother that uh, uh, his parsonage was on fire and uh, his children were at home and they were about to die and a neighbor walked by and saw the fire and knocked on the door and said, you got to get out, you got to get out. They said, no, my daddy said not to open the door for anybody. And, and, and I don't know the whole story, but, but he screamed and he hollered and he hollered and said, you don't understand, you've got to leave now, you've got to leave now. And praise God, they finally did and they were safe. But... Uh, I, I tell you, you got some folks that are on fire, they don't even know it, brother. You've got some folks out here on fire and in trouble, they don't even know it. Josiah's whole generation was on fire, uh, about to die, about to have judgment. He didn't even know it. Can God depend on you? As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to those that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his master. Oh, that you would refresh the Lord Jesus. Oh, that he could look down and say, thank you for being faithful. 
I'm going to reward you, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for not being a coward and hiding the light, hiding your talent. Thank you for standing up and using what I gave you. Confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble. Oh, we're in a time of trouble right now. It's like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You ever had a foot out of joint? You ever had a broken tooth? I tell you, eat some more sugar, you'll have one. I'm going to tell you something right now. You listen to me. That's pain. That's pain. I've had a wrist out of joint. And some of you have had these things. That's what you're like. That's the grief you bring to God when you're a scaredy cat, when you're a coward, when you're lazy, when you're selfish. We need to be a trump, one who can be dependent. So somebody can depend on you in a time of emergency, in a time of trouble. You need to be a trump. You need to be a trumpet. You need to be somebody that's going to sound the alarm. What else is a trump? Oxford English Dictionary says an obstruction, a hindrance to cast a trump in one's way. Ooh, amen to that. You better get in the way of the devil. You better be a trump in the devil's way. 2 Thessalonians 2, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth. That means get in the way. That means hinder. Will let until he be taken out of the way. God will use you and say, okay, time's up. I'm going to judge everybody. i got to get you out of the way because you'll keep preaching to them. I tell you what, I I'm going to judge this crowd. And, and you know what? You've preached long enough, Enoch. It's time to get out of the way, and God will take you out of the way. But until God takes you out of the way, until God takes you out of here, you ought to be in their way. You ought to be in the devil's way. You ought to be in the wicked's way. In your community, you ought to be in the wicked's way. In these churches, you ought to be in the devil's way. Wherever the devil is at, you ought to be in his way. And he ought to say, ah, oh, if I could only get rid of that person, if I could only discourage him, he's in my way. I can't do what I want to do because they keep exposing me and rebuking it and sounding the trumpet. Oh, amen. You get in the devil's way, church of God. Praise God for family members like in Song of Solomon. They said, if our little sister be a door, we'll enclose her with boards of cedar. They're saying, you're going to be loosey-goosey and worldly, little sister. We're going to get in your way and try to hinder you. And do you try to hinder your brother and sister from being evil? Do you try to hinder your family members from being evil? Do you even try to hinder your children from being evil? God forbid what parents do. They're not enclosing them. I tell you what, they're saying, here's the world. Enjoy it. Here's your cell phone. Stay in there in the middle of the night with your iPad. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're looking at. But just, you know, go enjoy. It. Then they say, I wonder why my child re rebelled. Somebody sticks a gun to your head and steals your child, die fighting. And there might not be anything you can do. But I'm going to tell you something. You ought to do everything you can do to enclose your children, put a hedge about them. Get in the way of the devil. Get in the way of the devil. What he's trying to do to your children. God, help us. They that forsake the law, praise the wicked. But such as keep the law, contend with them. Are you a law keeper? Be a trump. Get in the way of the devil. Be a trump. Sound the alarm. Be a trump. Be somebody that can be depended upon to sound the alarm in a time of trouble. Lord says, I didn't light you to go hide the light under a bed. I didn't light your candle so you can go hide it under a bucket somewhere, a bushel. No. Let me give you one more. Trump. To best to cap, like I trump you, to outdo, to surpass. A trump, a person of surpassing excellence. Finally, I just exhort you to be excellent. Go beyond the crowd if you have to. Outdo the devil. Answer the fool according to his folly. Trump them because you have the truth. You have the truth. Don't be ashamed to use wit and humor. Don't be ashamed to expose their folly. The Bible says, Wisdom, she crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. If female wisdom does this, why can't female virtuous women? That woman at the well, she got saved, and three minutes later, she was out in the midst of the city at the gates crying about Jesus and alerting everybody. Why can't you do that? Why can't you do that? You shouldn't speak in formal church. You shouldn't speak in formal church. Don't usurp authority over a man. Be feminine. But I'm going to tell you, why can't you cry in the gates, sister? You can cry in the gates. And, and the more we get of it, the better. The Bible says, She, the virtuous woman, openeth her mouth with wisdom. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. To trump. A trump is one who excels. 
Excel. Don't sit here and say, well, I'm, I'm godly, just as godly as everybody else. Excel them all, sister. Go beyond them. Say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to excel them. I'm going to be excellent. I'm going to be excellent. Praise God for you. Praise God for those that excel. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Praise God for the Elijahs. It's time to stand up. I tell you, you got the truth. They ought to be ashamed for killing little babies. God, you say, well, well, you're a bigot. You're against homosexuality. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in all my life. A uh, homosexual living like a dog, man. Why do you think you got monkey pox? You're living like a monkey, man. God forbid. I'm not going to be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed. I have nothing to be ashamed of. You ought to be ashamed. Stand up and expose this folly. Horatius Bonar, who died in 1899, says there is some danger of falling into a soft and effeminate Christianity under the plea of a lofty and ethereal theology. Christianity was born for endurance, not an exotic, but a hardy plant. It walks with firm step and erect frame. It is kindly, but firm. It is gentle, but honest. It's decided, but not churlish, being rude and unfeeling. It does not fear to speak the stern word of condemnation against error. You'll never see sweeter brothers than Horatius Bonar and Andrew Bonar. Read their poetry. It really touched my life and was a blessing to me as a young man. And uh, uh, I love the writings of Andrew and uh, Horatius Bonar. But I tell you what, don't think they're so sweet that they're just going to sit back and let evil go all unrebuked. It does not fear to speak the stern word of condemnation against error, nor to raise its voice against surrounding evils under the pretext that it's not of this world, you know, we're just going to let it all go to hell. It does not shrink from giving honest reproof lest it come under the charge of displaying an unchristian spirit. You're being unchristian. No, no, you're being a sissy and a coward. Get behind me, Satan. That's what you ought to say. It calls sin, sin on whomsoever it is found and would rather risk the accusation of being actuated by a bad spirit than not discharge an explicit duty. But people are going to call you names. They're going to call you this. They're going to say you're being evil. They're going to say you hate women. They're going to say you're a bigot. They're going to say you're this, you're that. You will just go ahead and say it. But you're not going to silence me, buddy. I know what the devil's trying to do. You run your big mouth. You're not going to silence me. I'll make my face harder than yours. I've never been quiet. I've never been quiet in the face of bullies. And I'm sure you're not going to start now. The religion of both Old and New Testaments is marked by fervent, outspoken testimonies against evil. Ooh, yes it is. To speak smooth things in such a case may be sentimentalism, but it's not Christianity. It's a betrayal of the cause of truth and righteousness. Paul met accusations bravely and will not allow his good to be evil spoken of. There's the verses. Our reformers met their slanderers bravely. Hey, there's a time to just ignore it and not be like them. But there's also a time to say, wait a minute, you're not going to slander me. You're not going to defame me. And I'm going to speak up. And I'm going to rebuke you. And I'm going to defend myself in this situation. And I'm going to defend others who are being slandered. And you ought to defend your brothers and sisters. You ought to defend the truth. And God forbid, of course, sodomites are going to accuse you. Of course, adulterers and adulteresses are going to accuse you. Of course, that crowd is going to accuse you. Of course, the drunkards and the witches are going to accuse you. Of course, the backsliders are going to accuse you. Love them, but don't be silent. Don't be silent. Stand up. There's times to defend. There's time to talk back to the wicked. There's time to talk back to the fools. There's time to do exploits. And I close with Jeremiah. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. Maybe that's you right now. Maybe that's been you your whole Christian life. God forbid, brother and sister. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbaying and I could not stay. Woo, praise God. I heard the defaming of many. That's why he was quiet. And that's also why he stood up. That means the defamation, the slanderers. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. You stand up and answer that crowd. You answer them like, 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 like uh, Elijah did. It came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them 
and said, cry aloud, for he is God. Either he's take talking, or he's pursuing, or he's in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. You mock this Belite crowd. You mock this Sodomite crowd. There's a place for it. There's a place for standing up and telling the truth. You ought not be living like a monkey, brother. You ought not be living like a dog. You ought to stand up and do what's right. You're not going to make me ashamed of the truth. I tell you, we got a lot of lazy, dumb dogs that don't bark when you're supposed to bark. I don't want a, bark that, a dog that just barks for show. I don't want a dog that barks anywhere around me for no reason at all. And there's a lot of people barking stupidity, and they don't even have any knowledge. They don't even know what they're barking at. No, I don't want anything like that. But if you've got a lazy dog that don't bark when he's supposed to bark, and God says, I've got a lot of preachers, I've got a lot of Christians that should be barking right now. The enemy is at, our hand, is at the gate. You ought to start barking. You ought to start barking. And God says, we've got dumb dogs that don't bark. I tell you, I've given you the definition of the trumpers, good and bad. Don't be a bad trumper, be a good trumper. Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you'll help us trump, that you'll help us sound the alarm, that you'll help us get in the way and be a trump in the way, that you will help us, Father, to be dependable and faithful to get the job done in a time of trouble. Lord, you've given us precious truth. Lord, thank you for it. Now we, your, we are your ambassadors, your representatives. You've called us to go out into all the world. You've, out, you've called us to rebuke and reprove with all long-suffering and doctrine. You've called us, Lord, to expose evil, to get in the way of evil until you take us out of here, Father. May we be rewarded. May you say good and faithful servant. May we hear those words. Now, Lord, raise up this Josiah generation that will be horrified at the sight of evil, that will tremble at what's about to happen, Father. And male and female, I pray, young and old, Lord, that we'll get out here in love, not railers, not evil, not proud and arrogant, but, Father, with confidence, stand up and say, I will not be ashamed, and we'll tell the truth with firmness and expose it. And may we save many, Father, and may we be in the way of that filthy devil, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Well, brother, I don't know what happened to my trumpet sound.